Hello and welcome to Critical Rollback, literally burning the midnight fuel. <laughs> where we are coming to you recording from a cell where Vox Machina has left us to starve to death. <laughs> he didn't though. Um, anyways, I'm Yana. My name is Ball. I don't know why that took me so long. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was waiting so long. I think it was trying so hard to focus on the remembering the intro line that you forgot your actual fixed line. And I forgot that I'm Amazing. supposed to like say who I am and also who am I? Do I need? Do I need to add this to the script? Darling? No, it's fine. <laughs> you don't need to add. Your name is Bald, you weirdo. <laughs> I mean, your name was literally in the third line. <laughs> you shouldn't have it. It's in the script. So how are you doing, Yana? <laughs> I'm in boot camp for legal failures. It is not quite midnight yet, but almost. Yeah, I've been up since and five I'm in the morning. And I'm revisiting... Wonderful. And I'm revisiting shoujo manga from my youth that is kind of unhinged. Mm. How are you doing? I'm listening to you recount facts about uh, shoujo manga from your childhood. If you pay a certain amount to be our patron, you too can listen to that. <laughs> yeah, if we ever remember to post the, uh, the outtakes, um, not to throw shade or anything, my dear, what are you? What? what? Anonymous leopard? Ooh, oh. sexy. Um, why did I say... <laughs> what? what? <laughs> this is a Critical Role podcast. We are here to discuss episode 6 of Critical Role, Breaching the Umbrella. Sometimes things come out of my mouth and I have to spend a second going, why did I, what? Where did that come from? Yes, yes, I have to spend the seconds too. <laughs> and that's when I wrangle the podcast back into being a podcast. This is a podcast <laughs> about Critical Role. We are recording on the 9th of January 2022. It's our first New yes, Year. it's, mm-hmm. First episode of the new year, but we are still in the time paradox. Yeah, that's true. Which means that eventually you'll hear an episode that's from 2021. Several, actually. Several. Like eight and nine, right? Yeah, we have eight and we nine. Have eight and nine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we still need to do seven, and then we are done with the catch up. Yeah, and then we can go back to a regularly scheduled timeline. We go from seven to eleven. No, ten. No, whatever. Um, you doing okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Dear listener, if you're confused about what the time paradox is and what we're talking about, listen to episode four. Though statistically, you have because outside of session zero, that's the best doing high numbers episode we have at this point. Yeah, we don't know why. Funny as Thank fuck. you. We are. So maybe we should keep up the unhinged energy. This is why we record at midnight. Yes. For me. And at 3.39 for me, but I've had a particular day. <laughs> so the energy's weird. Technically, we have been awake the same amount of hours and also the same hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we both don't sleep good. Okay. Um. So, are there any contemporary critical role issues, things, whatever we have to talk about? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. I am reaching the point where I'm starting to forget there is critical role campaign one beyond the underdark. I just am, am like in a state where I'm like, I guess this is all there is. <laughs> There's a light at the t end of the tunnel, darling. This one, episode seven, and then with just three left. <laughs> yes. It's like a Grey's Anatomy song about that. But yeah, but that's I also think, about abortion. I think there are content I mean, warning. Um, <laughs> I don't think that there's there hasn't been any. They haven't adjusted to the intro, but like there hasn't been any new stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think they decided to just, like, either they are really, really working on a on an um, PR statement about the intro, or they just decided to ignore it because the fandom is also very split on whether to address anything or not. Yeah, they might be doing the thing where, like, you freeze, <laughs> like, you just sort of freeze and wait until the the free animal passes. I don't think fandom is a prey yeah. animal, this seems to be the approach. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is, not particularly, well, this time specifically, but other times. Uh, no, this time has been very civilized, actually, yes. on the on the um, side of the people who are like, maybe you should address this, this stuff, maybe that's not the best look. The other side has been, well, well, we've been over this, we don't have to talk about it yes. here. Uh, hmm. What else? What hmm. else is there to say about... Anything. Anything, I, uh, anything pertaining to... 
Yeah. Robbie, if you're listening to this, please stay in campaign three. Please stay. So you're so very fun to have around. So very fun. We're also very pretty. <laughs> uh, and I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, it might be. Like I haven't even I haven't even heard any spoilers for the last episode that aired. Uh I'm not gonna give you any right now, because otherwise I have to tag it. <laughs> yeah, that's the best approach, I suppose. Um I have complicated feelings about Encanto, but in another way that most people seem to have. So no talking about that either. Yeah, you're not gonna I mean I still can't believe that You've like, had the entire movie spoiled for yeah, you I so don't far. I don't care about spoilers. I'm just thinking about how like now we can have complicated feelings about Encanto, but like Lindsay Ellis said like a, a, a an offhand statement about Raya, a movie nobody talks about anymore. Which she also was the gajillionth person to say the exact same thing. And, uh, look how that turned out. <sighs> I mean, listeners will already have picked up on our YouTube diet, I suppose, so this shouldn't be surprising, and, um... Uh, like, Lindsay Ellis is literally the reason I got into media analysis. Lindsay Ellis, more, more <laughs> than just us, Lindsay Ellis is the reason why there's, like, why video essays are the way they are. <laughs> Yeah! Like, she kind of codified the pre-video essay in, like, you know... She did, by accident. She wasn't even supposed to be doing that. It was a problem. Mm -hmm. And literally, if, like, I ha if I hadn't... If my pre-teen... And no, very much teen, actually. I was a teen by 2008. If I hadn't started watching the Lindsay videos and the Jiso Otaku videos, those two, um, specifically, I never would have, like, started thinking about media that way. And I never would have gotten into writing analysis and essays for the fundamentals which wouldn't have which meant we wouldn't have had any like um frame of reference for this kind of podcast yeah so that's a very direct track there it's uh oh <laughs> yeah the Lindsay Ellis is done with this shit is, is, is yeah sure I can't blame her for it, but I'm just sad about it uh, no yes yes like no matter how like <laughs> I mean, she herself did an entire, almost two-hour-long video about how she's a very flawed human being with who has done a lot of shit in her time on the internet. Um, like this shouldn't be like any, a secret to anything. I don't think we have to rel to like justify anything about this. No. Um, <laughs> no. It's just. You know, so like I'm just, uh, I'm just a believer that like even if she was fully in the wrong, which I don't think she is, I think that even if she was, no, nobody deserves to be like hate mobbed like. And, like, she's been being hate mob pretty much consistently since uh, Gamergate? Yes. Like, she had a, she had a, not a TED talk, but, like, one of these panel talks, like, these, so, back yeah. in 2007 or something, about when she was cancelled about making a joke about white genocide. Yeah, like, she's been hate mobbed by every side of the internet. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So, like... I mean, also, it's, it's probably just healthy for her to just stop doing it anyways, even if this hadn't happened, but... It's just sad. It's <sighs> sad that, like, this is, you know. Friendly reminder that cancel culture only exists on this level. Like, you, if you're any more of a celebrity than Lindsay Ellis, cancel culture kind of isn't a thing. Yeah. But on this level, especially when your entire income platform, etc., is, like, dependent on Honestly, internet channels, it is very much I a really thing. I think that we need, like, different, like, words for it. Because I feel like we're describing, we like, two different, like, we are. There's, like, cancel culture as, like, a thing that happens to senators, <laughs> which uh, is, like, it's not a thing. <laughs> or it doesn't. Or it doesn't. And there's, like, cancel culture the way it happens If Twitter to decides to disable your account because you keep violating uh, the terms and conditions, that's the free market. That's a private platform deciding that you have broken their rules. Yes. That's not cancellation. That's just you breaking, literally breaking rules. Yes. And, like, as it happens to individual people on a small scale of, like, just a person getting just fully, like, destroyed and having their life attempted assassination of a person's in personal career, like, calling your workplace and trying to get yeah. you fired, which I think, honestly, is closer to swatting than it is to cancel culture. I've seen the term mobbing thrown around for this, which is very funny to me because mobbing is, like, the German word for bullying. <laughs> it's, a, it's almost too cute, I think. That too. Hey, we shouldn't be talking about this. Yeah, we shouldn't. This isn't what this podcast is about. Speaking no. of things that upset us. <laughs> this podcast isn't about? Yes, please. Oh, upsetting. Okay. I was going to segue into this to the content and spoiler warnings. Uh -huh. 
All right. Yes. Yeah. We can just just start. We can just start. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the warning section of, of the episode. Um, we'll begin with by going over the content warnings. Uh, you should be aware that there's quite a bit of body horror in this episode. I think we talk about this later on. Uh, there's also just so much torture. So much torture. Not all of it shown, but definitely referenced in detail. Um, this is the episode where they get Hema, so you can imagine. Uh, there's also some gratuitous violence, especially when it comes to lava and stuff, so be conscious of that. Um, there's some pycorn flirting, and some of it is a little bit... Eh, but for the most part, it's, it's not too bad. Uh, we talk about it later on also. Um, in our actual episode proper, we t- joke about some cannibalism stuff, as always. Uh, we talk about the pandemic and panic attacks, and as usual... Just a lot of sexual content and rowdy jokes. You know, the usual fun stuff. Uh, don't think I'm forgetting anything, but if we do forget something, always feel free to let us know. And as for the spoiler warnings for this episode, um, we are... We do talk very briefly about Dragon Age 2, but I think that's all of it. Uh, and just as a reminder, Ryan Akaba is on the show for 21 more episodes. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the episode. Bye! Out of game tidbits. Bow, yes. darling sweetheart, duck of my life, esteemed business partner. <laughs> what is happening out of game? I have cut myself on all this edge. Oh, do you need a bandage? <laughs> do you need a bandage? Huh? <laughs> 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 no, but that would be made well if you could just edgy tea pose for me. <laughs> So, uh, with lots of eyeliner. <laughs> so, as you probably have surmised, this is the episode where they introduced the co- the closet cosplay uh, intro. The opening. They have an o- they have an opening, and it is not anything we need to have conversations about. No, uncomfortable conversations. No, the, because it's the just most a bunch of people thing, cos- closet cosplaying. The most problematic yeah? thing we can talk about is how Sam looks good. This is the. Only time that Sam Regal, in his history of live show costumes and everything, has managed to make himself slash Scanlon look like an appropriately slutty bisexual. Yeah, he's kind of like working. Like I'm sorry to say, it's kind of working for him. Yeah, and it's disturbing. We here at Critical Rollback are not in the habit of saying good things about Sam Regal. We're not. We are really, really We're not. not. We recognize when he has good moments, and, like, this episode is strangely one of them. But, like, to an extent. Um, <laughs> Sometimes, yes. <laughs> but, like, goddamn. Hey, Sam. We also don't really... Put on eyeliner Like, you can't more. say many... Yes. Just general fashion advice for everyone out there. <laughs> Black eyeliner never hurt anybody. Mm-hmm. We don't have to leave everything in the in two thousand and eight. Well, well, this is this black eyeliner does hurt me occasionally as it gets in my eyes, but <laughs> it's not. It's, it, 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 but does it make you look good? It does make you look does good. It? it does make me look good though. Uh-huh. But every time I put on black doesn't eyeliner, doesn't make me look good. I prefer brown, but hey, it does. It just it looks good. I'm too pale for it, but. If I were going for a more pasty goth look, it would look good on me too, but I don't do that in my regular life, so I do subdued colors. Mostly like brown and gold tones. Yes. You don't need to know about my makeup routine. You don't even need to know my face. Yes. For all of you know, we are a goose and an Allura cosplay. Woohoo! Oh. My hair is literally long enough to do that. <laughs> yes. Ah. Whatever cosplay our intro yes. is going to be so okay. weird. Um, anyway. <laughs> what are we... What are we, what are we, what are we doing? Would we, like, we like dancing to the song? Probably. I could teach you medieval dances. Fun. Um, <laughs> so, 
There's also the... If you keep supporting us on no, Patreon, we might have a I budget refuse to promise this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what kind of budget you would need to have for an actual opening video shoot or something? I need to fly. Is... I need to literally fly to where you are. <laughs> I need to be a goose. <laughs> that too. That too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so if we ever make a few thousand dollars... Sure. Many thousands of dollars with this podcast, which is totally happening. Yes. <laughs> totally. Um, back to the Shout internet. Shout out though. to the two patrons we have. We can now share ramen packets. Hi. Share, uh, but, but Hi. speaking of uh, the intro, yeah. uh, you've, ri- you've written here about the Matt throwing the dice thing, which should have totally been a. S- yes. Should have renamed a. Like an icon for the show? Yes. Just the shot where Matt throws the dice, they freeze in the air, and he shuts the book. It's like ah, that is so good. Like this is very edgy grown adult cosplaying as like. I mean, they're challenging yeah. Game of Thrones. Like I my favorite in a way. is Laura with the little toy bow, and she's just like clearly oh, just like the moving. bright red one. Yeah, it's it's so cute, and like but like it's it's endearing. <laughs> It is. It's just as low. It's like low budget production. They have the song that where they would keep for the down through the next campaign. Like um, do, 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 do. yep. They should have just stuck with that song. By the way, uh, I am very upset that campaign three got its own song. Da, 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 but da, da, why don't you have to share? Da, 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 da. It's such a good song. Such a good song. It's just a theme. You have a theme. Don't get rid of your theme. Why don't you get rid um, of your theme? Why would you? Anyways, they also all look somehow... The black eyeliner makes all of them look a lot younger. <laughs> like, even younger than they already do. Yeah, because they're it's weird. babies at this point. Yes. I think this is even before, like, Talison turned 40. I, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I did not look up Talison trivia for this episode. <laughs> uh, but then they immediately after yeah. that, this very fun shoot, where, like, it genuinely just... Which you just, which just hypes you up. It's just, it's just, it's just that's fucking gold. It's fucking it's kill something. It's fucking D and D, boys. Uh, after that, they immediately <laughs> kill all the energy by playing <sighs> the character in shows. Pike was born in the Bramble Boards or something. I, like I, to a family I skipped of them by now. Something something with a yeah. very bad name, known yeah. for sure. <laughs> I skipped these by now, but I swear to God that the first lines or something, I will know those by heart before we leave the Underdark, which, uh, yeah, uh huh. May happen. At Fighter, some point. distant third. That's the thing that lives in mm-hmm. my brain. Is it lover, musician, and fighter, distant third? <laughs> and gives. Also, he's adorable and gives expert massages. <laughs> Her own stolen trinket. Um. Ah. Uh. I have read the product of Kith and Kin and it seems to be fine. Yeah. I haven't Just read it as yet. an update on that. If if we both read it, we'll make an, a bonus episode about it, but in the meantime, no such luck. Yeah. Nope, we are both very short on time. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, so. Half of them are wearing the same shirt, which isn't even merch. It's just the shirt. It's not merch yet. It's the shirt with the names. Yeah. Just the, like, the names in the meme format, when you just put name and name and name and name. It was like a meme format or yeah, something in, in 2015. It? What? Friends? Friends wasn't even on the air. Was this when Friends came to Netflix and everybody lost their shit over I that? I think so. Anyways, they're all wearing this shirt. Marisha is wearing it off, off the shoulder. Um... It's not merch yet, but it will be. They're very hesitant to do shirts because it's so much work, you guys, so we can only do this if you really want us to. Now they have a 10 minute ad segment just for all the things I sell on their stores. Yes. And gave us an EU store so I can have a third store sending me all the updates. <sighs> just when the powders was finally low enough for the UK store to be actually worth it. <laughs> yeah, by the way, oh, well. uh, I've Googled it and it's, um, it's a shirt design. From 2001 for, uh, what? Uh, I think the Japanese t shirt label, uh, for John and Paul and Ringo and George. Oh, okay. Do you know who these people are? Yes, unfortunately. Okay. Why? 
<laughs> I've never been a particularly huge fan of the Beatles. I mean, huge fan of anything is like, it's, it's, uh... I'm too much of a music snob. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know who these people are. I've dated someone who didn't and he was older than you. I'm gonna ask after we record who, but okay. Uh, <laughs> this is the second it's one. The first the one, I don't want the Beatles in class with me. Alright. Huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, um... Can you tell me where we're at, darling sweetheart? Believe it or not, we're still looking for chemo. Wow! Yeah, that's precise, down to the point. Is, 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 yeah, mm-hmm. So this is after two attacks on the war camp. Uh, the second one being a little bit more successful mm-hmm. than the first. Last episode, I think they <sighs> captured the captain of the Durgar war camp and... Uh, Extorted him. They kind of interrogated him, and then he got away and didn't, and Clorota ate Clorota him. Clorota ate him. Or ate his brain, at least. I don't know if that counts as eating him, but he did eat of him. Is this cannibalism? Sure. Uh, <laughs> Do I have to add this as the trigger warnings now? There's some high flying stuff, abomination making shit. Just ignore me, okay. <laughs> yeah, all of this is going down, and they got... They are in a loop around, like they walked in a circle last episode, they're back where they yeah, started, and now they can go. Hmm? That's literally huh? how they start, because I think Scanlan wasn't in last episode, was he? Sam wasn't in Sam last was... episode. Scanlan was there, he used the weapon. Yeah, Sam wasn't there last episode again. <laughs> um, and they uh, they explain it to Sam by saying we went in a circle. Yeah, and he was like, I was there the entire time. It's a bit at the beginning, it's kind of fun. Yeah, it is. Like, just in general, saying... This episode was actually kind of fun. Kind of fun. I don't know if we'll rate it, but it was kind of fun. Yeah. At least, sec- it, uh, it wasn't- at least the second half was a little bit more fun than the first, but like the first wasn't too bad either. Yeah, like it wasn't like just kind of pointless and boring like the last one. It wasn't at all. Like it had a painful moment towards the end, but it's not the never ending agony that's going to be episode seven. Yes. It's not going to be. Have you found a way to gamify that yet? I've I have the, the idea of of I have some thoughts. I have time okay. also. Cool. You do. Cool. Okay. Anyways, also we haven't said this before. This episode was aired on April sixteenth, twenty fifteen. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. We are again uh, January. I am now January tenth, uh, twenty twenty two, because just, it has just turned midnight. Yeah, it's not the minute turn. Because uh, it's 401 at my end, but um, it is, to me, still the 9th of January. Yeah. Because uh, time zones are bullshit. So they, they uh, start the episode doing what they do best, which is meandering around. Yeah, we find out they're now in a tunnel with all of the lava, referred to last episode's tangent about what that would do to you. And know that your local geologist is crying in the background. Yes. Yes. Uh, where is everybody at? At a on a personal level? That was, that was cute. <laughs> yeah, they they had a short rest and uh, just like they are. I think this is where they also start role playing. They're just a little stir crazy, like a little. Um, they've been in the cave for a while. Get the, yeah, I mean. I think it's been three days official time. Yeah, but it's been like six it's been this... like six sessions. And six <laughs> sessions will six sessions is a lot of yeah. sessions. Yeah. Six sessions with no daylight. And we too are also very stir crazy because for us it has been I don't know, thirteen, twelve, twelve. We've done this twelve times now. Yes. Uh but yeah, they're Scanlon is being creepy. Um, yeah, because they go, they walk through a lava tunnel and he's like, Pike, and that armor, aren't you being cooked? Don't you want to take it off? Ugh. Don't you want to change into something more breezy? Yeah, Laura shuts that down. Thank, Thank you, you, Laura. Laura. Also, that's not how Thank armors you, work. No. And lava. It, well, I mean, you shouldn't, you probably shouldn't wear plate armor to lava, but you also shouldn't be this close you to lava. You also shouldn't be wearing so, it. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm pretty sure anything you'd be... You should just don't be at no don't be at lava. Why are you buying clothes at the lava store? <laughs> like, I think this is technically more like magma because it is like the magma or <laughs> um English vowels are bullshit. Um because it's the very liquid, not turning uh greyish still underground 
stage of the stuff. And now I have made every local geologist cry, and I'm sorry, but you know you what know I what? mean. Uh, we've already done our service to the to the local geologists <laughs> by having one on in somewhere in the time paradox. Ah, uh, okay. Huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. They talk about climate conditions, which is how we find out that Tiberius just has magical items nobody knows about. Friendly reminder, he stole an earring from Scanlan, and it won't be the last time he did that. Yep. Um, there are also nine adults playing Don't Touch the Hot Magma. Yes. Liam finds this very funny, and he's not he's wrong. wrong. He's kind of funny. And they will continue to play this yes. many times. Indeed. And failing at not touching the lava also many memorable times. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking of a very specific time in the future. Uh, oh, Keyleth. Wh- oh, Keyleth. Keyleth they, tries... At, at the time when the lava damage is actually, like, regular rules lava damage. Yes. She tries very hard. Uh, this is also the episode where Keyleth tries so hard. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, and this, and this might be the episode where she just starts having a a consistent panic attack for the rest of the entire arc. Yes, just con- like just having a panic attack, going to sleep, waking up, having a panic attack. It just it just keeps going Which, on. Like, it's like on the back burner, maybe, but you know, TMI. But like, I've I've definitely I've had those. I've had like I've I I call them like the roaring like the rolling blackout type panic attacks, where you're not like. Having a break. Oh, well, it's like when you're not having like, a full breakdown, like you're not panting and, and thinking, you can just feel it kind of like in the back of your head at all times. It's It sounds a little bit like just existing during a pandemic. Like Yeah, but it's like you're not, like it's the, very, it's the nearly The horrible past. thing is, the horrible thing is happening the entire time and you kind of, but you kind of ha- also have to go to work. So it's just, uh, not right now. Yep. And I think that's what Keel is doing right now. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Keep up is living her own pandemic. <laughs> <sighs> uh, so are we. It's getting bad again, which I think we say every time we mention the pandemic. Yes. <laughs> There's never been a situation where we mention the pandemic and we're like, it's getting good, actually. Even though it was kind of good in the summer, but the summer was already getting bad again, but... Uh... It's fine. Let's talk about this fun critical. No, let's let's talk about this fun. <laughs> Nothing is fun. Let's talk about this fun critical role episode. Okay, Mona is tracking. Well, Vex is tracking. She you know, is. It makes sense for Vex to track. Yes, yes, and she negotiated favorite terrain, so it's fine. Yay, She's doing her job again. She's also the only one who remembers Pike's vision, what? What is- which had like landmarks in it. I still yeah. don't fully understand what favorite terrain does or is supposed to do. And I don't think I've ever had to, like, assist me in a situation, and I've played Ranger. Don't worry about it. Anyway. It's just, it's, it's your favorite terrain, it's just vibes. My favorite terrain is breakfast buffets, or it used to be, before the panini. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I didn't think most breakfast buffets had paninis. I, is that, like, a German thing? No! <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I was talking about! I know, about. I know I'm being an asshole. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Vex identifies where Kima is. She there's you know Kima tracks. There's Kima leavens. True. Yes. She like they just f- keep finding like battlegrounds and stuff that might have been left by Kima. Is like meaning she put up three different battles. Which like yeah, you go girl. You go, girl. Um. They have a have a short moment of remembering what Queen King and Queen are called. Yeah, they ca- they continue to important. call her Queen Ulalala, which is like Ulala is not that hard of a name to forget, guys. To remember, <laughs> it's also not that hard to forget. Uh, I'm doing fine. How are you doing? <laughs> Let's do a quick check in. <laughs> what? Let's do a quick in mid mid podcast check in. How are you doing, Yada? <laughs> I'm drinking coffee at midnight. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I remember what words <laughs> do and how they work. I have no issues speaking in a foreign language right now. <laughs> actually, I don't. I figure I found out that when I get tired and or drunk, speaking English is actually easier than German because of phonetics. I like the 
the pronunciation is easier on the mouth. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything against English. I think English is a beautiful language, but I do think that it is very much like the baby talk of languages. It is. I think, like... Except yeah, our no, sounds. Our sounds the... are hard. <laughs> they're hard on... It's not even our sound. You're just kind of howling. <laughs> just kind of making canine noises. <laughs> it's an our sound. <laughs> 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 What part of the episode is this? <laughs> is this a? I don't know. <laughs> uh, the one where we lose track. We lose track. And Hinge just doing numbers for us. Keep going. <laughs> so King Murgle, Queen Ulara. Remember this, listeners. We will return to it after the break that we don't take. Um, is banter? They are bantering in this episode. Just it happens. non con Yeah. It's non sequiturs. Like, Kilo the Asperity to make a nuclear bomb and how long that would take. It was a very long time, which. I don't know, Percy. I think, I yeah. think you're underestimating yourself. <laughs> just, just find some demon, you'll figure it yeah, out. Keep talking to the right demon, eventually you'll find him. Maybe, maybe like, like go, go, in the, go like to. Go like to Orthax, the supervisor or something. Just talk to you. Call up the store Orthex, manager. And he's like, I need actually just hold for a second, and then he goes and he gets a different supervisor, and he's like, Oh, uh, <laughs> hold on for a second, I'll transfer you, and then he transfers you again. I mean, you'll Do you find, want lasers? Yeah, you'll have to sell your soul a bunch of. Want to make a microwave? Do you want to? In, do you want to invent X-rays? No. no. Well, maybe the fight. Um, is this what the Star Wars? No, those are X-wings. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't need the hell out of airships. Anyways! Uh, does Vex cast Path to the Trace or Keyleth? Because I know they both have No! It. Keyleth does! Ah, right. Keyleth does. And every time Keyleth casts Path to the Trace, I get nervous because she's a druid and she can do so much better stuff with her spell slots. This is what we have the ranger for. <laughs> yeah, that's what the ranger is I for. I found this remarkable. That's, that is Yeah, I found this remarkable for. though because, uh, because Sam doesn't know what the spell does. Which is very cute and very early because it's like, I was like convinced this would be the most frequently cast spell for campaign one because it just keeps stealthing and Vex keeps doing yeah, it. Yeah, it's like this. But it's actually the fourth most commonly cast spell. Oh, really? What's their most commonly cast spell? Healing Word, I think? I don't oh, remember that. I how it might be like Hex. I don't remember what the most commonly cast spells were because I looked this up in what, November? October? I don't know. Time is a panini. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um uh Yeah, so they discover a patrol and need to deal with it, and this is when we finally, for the first time ever, start the Vex and Vax jokes. Yes. What, what yes. Part of this, is this related to like when uh Kiel tries to hand tries to No, that's a different part. It happens on many a times this episode. We might come across that part that you're referring to later. Yes, it's Who a knows? later part. Uh, but, yes. I'm Vex, he's Vex. It's understandable. We look alike. Which, mm-hmm. I mean... They do. At the comics. <sighs> at the statues. At the animated show. <laughs> oh, God, the animated show. Like, hey, why does Vex look like a block of wood? Why are Vex's boobs so pronouncedly pointing in different directions? <laughs> why, did, why does Vex's face look like a the word video game? It just looks like the word video <laughs> game. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, we'll see. God, that is coming. That is coming out this month. Oh, yes, God. we're gonna watch it together, aren't we? We're gonna watch it together, aren't we? We are. We uh, are. That didn't mean to come out so threatening, but we are, right? We are. We are. The two of us are, if anybody else, uh, not the listeners, wants to join, we'll figure that out, but the two of us are watching these together. They're not bringing the Owl House back to watch, for us to watch together, so hey. Yay. I'm glad because I think Yay. I need someone immediately there to ask if it was good or not. Yeah, they posted this, like, scene, and I was looking at it, and I was like, is it just me or does this kind of suck? I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like I'll feel different when it's not like original content, when it's like the stuff that I know and recognize, and I'll be like, oh, I remember this. Like the nostalgic goggles will kick in. But I watched that and I was like, oh. And maybe by that time, like, I think watching these things out of context also just makes us like, wow, the performance voice is strong in this one. This sounds so unnatural. <laughs> so, Grog with the big brain. 
Yeah, Grog covers her tracks. He's finally in his flower girl routine. We we Just of traces, which she has a little baggie of. Yes. Is then they're getting fried bananas and also chicken from the chat room. Apparently. Which isn't weird at all. Yeah, apparently it's a... F- I mean, I will say that if I if I were to accept any food from a stranger, it would be deep fried. I feel like... Really? I could put anything in there. Yeah, but like the whole thing for me is like, hot oil will get rid of a lot of evil. That is true. Frying something will get rid of a lot of evil that makes you sick, but they also could just be feeding you anything That's true. in that deep That's fried That's true. Crust. The deep fried it could just be like... It, it could just be like... A, some sort of could be like a I, I don't know I I can't even the problem is, is that I'm thinking about an animal <laughs> that I wouldn't eat like at least once. <laughs> I yeah it's fine I I don't need to think too hard about this. Yeah I just related to fried mystery food and this isn't even this isn't even that disturbing but I was on a school project creative thingy in Italy in the southern part of mm-hmm. Italy. Um, very south, we could see Sicily from a from a hotel. Um, we we took a ship to Sicily for the airport. Anyways, and they just and the dinner was just first of all very late in the day, and second yeah, of all, um, I, know, I remember that about it. First course, yeah, first course was always something deep fried, and we could never tell what it was, so we all just would like assort this stuff by shapes, <laughs> and one person had to try it to figure out what it was and if it was edible. And I got a deep fried olive. And deep frying doesn't make olives any less gross. I hate olives. Both kinds. I will taste olive oil out of something when I, when it's so, prepared for me. I, I, don't it's, it's you, I don't even know how you deep fry an olive. How would you... It's such a round shape. I wouldn't... How would you make the batter stick? To, uh, I, I mean, they must have figured it out somehow. I don't know. It worked out. But yes... I remember what I... I remember what I was traumatized by, okay? Yeah. I, I'm personally... Uh, I, my, my biggest fear is getting a deep fried pickle. Don't like pickles. I think that's gross. You don't? No. Oh, okay. I guess I'll be the one to eat the pickles and then. And even worse than the pickle is the concept of a hot pickle. Ugh. Yeah, the hot pickle doesn't sound very appealing, but my grandmother did put pickles into her uh, spaghetti sauce. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was weird. I didn't like it very much either. It's just, it's cucumbers. Um, Why would you put cucumbers in something? I don't know. You eat cucumbers raw. Yeah, I like cucumbers raw. Me too. Anyway. Yeah, no cucumbers to be found here. Um, we are, uh, we are, um, listening on a patrol who is a little freaked out by the whole Kvar and Stitch monsters getting, um, going, cr- going crazy and attacking people, which, which yeah. Like- doesn't sound like the best working conditions. Honestly, they'll, they'll out of that patrol. Like, yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, we feel you. You should just, just this is why you unionize. Um, Scanlan is coming along on a stealth mission for reasons. Yes, for reasons we are still confused by. At this point, we have pointed this out many a time. It's weird yeah. that he does this. And then he proceeds to roll. This, however, one, starts shenanigans. Right? Yes, he rolls a natural one. Which which then results in Pike being like, oh, but can I just pull him back and kiss her? And everyone is like, ooh. 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 And then Matt makes a roll of perception check, which is very valid, because like, Pike is not a very fast-moving yeah. creature. Yeah, and also just doing this immediately to negate a bad roll is like, is this sort of meta gaming? Yes. <laughs> kind of. It's like on a border. It's like you shouldn't really be doing that at the table. I think it's a little rude to stick with a dice roll. Mm-hmm. Also, what I find absolutely fascinating is that how that the entire table seems to kind of ship Pikelin. Yeah, no, they they do kind of ship Pikelin. It's a it's strange. I mean, is this okay? First, I think have we talked about this before? That is like a little. There's some under and overtones to Pikelin that are just creepy and inappropriate in a like genuinely upsetting way mm-hmm. it is and we will have words about the resolution of it later on too good god yeah. will we have words it's about that to have, but for we have one feeling regarding Pyclone because they have like very good moments and also moments where it seems like both of them are into it and like are enjoying it and, and, and seem to like kind of be circling around each other in a way that's not too bad um, yeah and like especially this early on um 
I think they both kind of like the players enjoy the banter a lot. Like Ashley really enjoys just acting um, stupid whenever he makes a pass at her. Yes, <laughs> she is so happy to troll him. It's something yeah, that she gets just... up with oh. a revive with fern. Yes, I think I it, feel that Ashley does just... is just like more than anything. Her characters are like something that unifies her characters is that they're kind of a little bit more trollish than you'd expect. Yes, they are trollish with like a facade that makes you suspect otherwise. Whether that facade is like deceptive, um, cutesy, and wholesomeness, or Pike is not wholesome terrifying. at all, <laughs> or just like a stone cold, I, I, I killed my entire family, or um, whatever fern is going on. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying fern. Absolutely terrifying. Oh, yeah. But like, yeah, no, she's a. Tr- uh, Ashley Johnson is a troll. She is. <laughs> yeah, um, also, I also think that this early on, this isn't, like, we know what happens in this campaign. We know that they're going to play, um, the romance for real and straight eventually, but I don't think Pycton was intended to be that. Yeah, and also I think they're more fun when they're not fully taken straight. I mean, Scamlin himself is barely above the gag character at this point. Yes. And also, like, there's there's things that they do for fun that are, like, not as cool, but, like, things they do as mm-hmm. a gag that are just, like, immediate turnoffs for me, but, like, on some level, I think that when they're both in on the joke, it, it comes across as very natural. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, with this stuff, everyone seems to be very in on the kind of joke Sam, joke Sam does here, which the table has consented to. We don't have to like it, but it's, like, part of the atmosphere. But also... Also, and this came to me while thinking about this episode. Mm-hmm. I think, in a way, everyone being like, ooh, eye emoji whenever something pikelet happens, or pike actually is like responsive to something. Is this just, is this just a bunch of middle school kids with shit eating grins telling you, oh, Bobby from the other grade likes you. <laughs> and then everyone is just like, ooh, and start planning your playground wedding. And you're like, well, he smelled and I never talked to him. What? <laughs> Yes, I know that. I know that. God, I remember when I, I was. I know that you know when that. When I was in high school. Uh, <laughs> yes. When I was in high school, I had this guy that I didn't have a crush on. But. But did that matter to public opinion? No. I was trying to be nice to him a lot because I did admire him. I thought he was very talented. Uh, and it was very funny, but like, I didn't, I didn't have a crush on him. Uh-huh. But like, and here's how you but know, the group mind. here's how you know I didn't have a crush on him, because I knew that there was a, a rumor in the rumor mill that I had a crush on him. Uh, and I let that rumor mm-hmm. spread because I thought, you know, he could probably. For his self esteem? Yeah. Oh god. He could probably use an oh, ego boost. Oh, story. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> that physically hurts me every time you tell it. Oh, sweetheart. Yeah, I just thought, like, I don't know, maybe it'll get back to it him. It explains a lot about And him. he'll think, like, oh, that's nice. It's nice to be, a, a, like, someone to have a crush on me. Like, that'll be nice for him. Oh, this explains so much about you. Yeah, it started early. Oh, I don't even know. I you, please? No, now, the thing is, I don't even know if I have a compulsory heterosexuality. It's more that I have compulsory, like, compulsory. <laughs> I just have <laughs> true compulsory. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. I mean, also for the record, <laughs> when there's a rumor out there that you have a crush on somebody, there's literally there's nothing, nothing you can, can do. do. You, just have to, you just have to play dead. <laughs> it's like a game of werewolf. As soon as somebody accuses you, you have lost. It's You can't talk your way out of this. No matter what you the do. The only thing you can do is just play dead and hope that it passes. Once the- it's like being mauled by a bear. You just have to lie still and hope that it passes quickly. I mean, like, maybe they'll lose interest. It's, just, it's, it's an absolutely no-win scenario. Nobody's winning here. As soon as somebody says you have a crush on this guy, you can be like, no! Or you can be like, what? And both is going to be equally suspicious. And you can see yes, and you that will be a- also be suspicious. And it'll just be... And then the entire school is going to plan your playground wedding. There's no, there's no right answer. <laughs> It's like a telltale there is game. There's no right answer. Silence is also not a good answer. Everything is suspicious. Once the group mind, once the group mind has decided you're in love, there is <laughs> no, no way, way out. out. There is one way that I haven't <laughs> tried, but it's like throwing somebody else under the bus and being like, I don't have a crush on that person, but you know who does? <laughs> I have no idea if that works. 
I'm pretty sure this is also where like werewolf rules apply again when it's like once you are accused but you accuse somebody else it's like yeah you're deflected yeah but you're all you're, the other person suddenly gets accused all like that person has also been accused so now you're both guilty I mean that means the person dies next round after you yep. <laughs> anyway what were we talking so this whole kiss thing is hypothetical by the way Yes, it's very hypothetical because it never really, like, she fails the perception roll, so Scamlin goes along and starts humming while stealthing with the twins, and Pike is just, huh? And it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the twins and Scanlan find, like, a blood-soaked um, battlefield from a few days ago, where they also find the tracks of a many-feeted Stitch monster. Is the term even, the term comes up in another episode, right? We're just using it now. Yes, the many, the feet monster? That too. The many feet monster. Yeah, the many feet God, monster. that also comes up in another episode, I think. Yeah. Is it the same? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows, truly? The, the stitch monsters do kind of... They are what they are. They are what they are. While they're doing this, everybody else is getting day drunk with Grog's ale, except for Tiberius, who's just reading. <laughs> yeah, the, I think uh, Pike does a, does a gag that's kind of like quick and, and like people don't notice it, but it's kind of cute. Where, like, Grog is taking, like, a big chug of ale. And he's like, ah, ale. Mm-hmm. And she, like, takes a tiny sip and she's like, ah, ale. I'm drunk now. Because she's... <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, I'm drunk already. Because she's tiny. <laughs> she is. She's so tiny. Also, friendly reminder, we do not endorse casual alcoholism. No, but I will say that this, why... isn't, this isn't, like, as bad as, like, Pike coping. And this feels more just, like... No, no, they're not drinking to cope necessarily, just in general. Yeah, we, we don't condone it. It just seems like a... This is relatively nope. fine. Nope. Too many alcoholics in my family yes. before I was born. Never met most of them. For reasons. Everybody stay hydrated. Take a sip of water. I'm drinking iced tea. Wonderful. This is also why when every, whenever we do a take a shot or to have something drinking gamey, we, we follow it up with stay hydrated. Because it's just... It's important to stay hydrated. I I honestly I <laughs> I get migraines when I'm dehydrated, uh, very easily. Which is why I drink like a cup of water every night before I go to bed. And I've just sort of learned to deal with needing to pee all the time. Uh It's just something everybody should do anyways, because if you don't drink enough before going to sleep, like I just wake up and feel like very bad. Zerknouched would be the German word for it. Just like you know, like, shriveled up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel that. But, like... Yeah, it's just that that's just the morning dehydration feeling of... Whoa. Yeah, but just in general, like, if you're if you're kind of feeling gross for no foreseeable reason, and you don't know why, just drink a little bit of water. It might not be it, but, like, it won't hurt you. And if you start h- hating everybody around you, maybe eat something. Yeah, that's, like, the rules. Like, if you feel gross and you don't know why you're dehydrated, if you hate everyone around you, you haven't eaten enough. And you f- if you feel like everybody hates you, you need to go to that's sleep. That's the three emotions that a person feels. <laughs> <laughs> There's also every noise uh, is annoying, which means you're about to have a migraine. Yeah. Uh, Either that or you've f- definitely fallen out of love with that person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are the two? Um... Mm-hmm. So we backpedaled on the kissing thing. Oh no, there's the thanks for the hand joke. Oh yeah, yeah, like Vax brings back an arm from the severed arm from the battlefield and it to hands it to Grog. And then everybody is fears Matt's wrath about the pun. Da, 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 but it's da, fine. Da, da, da. <laughs> it's very much like that kind of pun where Grog is like winking to the camera like Thanks for the hand, Vax. I mean, it's also very much the obvious joke that you kind of have to make in this scenario. You kind of have to make it. It's like my my thing about how some words are just, they only exist in puns, and I've never heard them outside of puns. Like the word behoof. Oh, I have heard behoof outside of puns. How am I? I've... I've... Maybe because everything I read when I was a teenager was was English fan fiction written by people who also weren't, who also weren't English native speakers, and so we all just made up words. <laughs> That the word new, clandestine is way less common than I thought it was. <laughs> it's a good word, though. It is. It's a really good word. Yes, but it no, is. No, I've only heard the hoof used as a joke for a hoofed animal. Like, hoof. that's the only way people use it. Hoof. Hoof, hoof kind of sounds like huffing should sound. Hoof. 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 
This has been Comparative mm-hmm. Linguistics with Critical Rollback. Uh, so after that, we backfiddle on the whole kissing thing, and being like, that never happened. Uh, yeah. Which, Sabbath bits, eh, Scanlan kind of deserves it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think so Pike also does a thing like I was, I was like telling him that maybe something would have happened if he had just stayed put. And everyone is like, ooh. 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 I don't know. Stick around next time. See what happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they roll stealth again and Percy fails this time and then Skilling kisses him. This is the reason why Percy is the most kissed character in this campaign. I think. Or possibly ever. Yeah. Has Grog it's like, kissed Percy? Uh, I don't know if Grog kissed Percy, but I do know that, like, there's, like, a thing where, where Vex and Vax for a while were, like, in competing for who has kissed the most <laughs> people, or kissed the most times. I think Vex kiss has the most kissed Percy's. the most... <laughs> because were, I think that was, like, the, the, the thing. It was, like, we know for a fact that Vax has kissed the most individual people. Like, different people. <laughs> oh, God. I know that Vex is kissed the most amount of times just because she's um, married. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like how we know that by episode 88, uh, Percy and Vex have had more sex than Grog and Skellen during the entire campaign. Um, (laughs) Combined. (laughs) Combined. (laughs) Including that time they slept with, they had a, you know, the Eiffel Tower tower with someone. I'm Um, adding sexual content to the content warnings. Yes. Which, I'm sorry to tell you, boys, but that means that you had sex with each other. Uh, and That requires eye contact. Yep. That, that requires teamwork. Intimacy. That too. Some negotiation. Intent. Yeah. Height differentials. <laughs> oh god, yeah, work, just working out the middle part for that is... Oh. Difficult. Difficult, yes. Um, How would they... they wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised I, if they were just talking... <sighs> The this, thing is, is that I wouldn't what, be surprised if what they considered to be a threesome was just them with, like, like a, a sharing a sex story. <laughs> I was just working out in my mind that technically for this to be anything in the shape of an Eiffel Tower, Scanlan would have to be the middle part. Oh my god, you're right. Or Grog. The height We've, difference is I just know if Grog is the middle part, the other part couldn't reach Scanlan. So, Scanlan has to be the middle part. We've cracked it. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh. But yes, without the a shadow of a doubt, I think... fictions nobody should ever write. Never. I mean, feel free the... to be inspired by this. Uh. But the thing is, is that, like, I'm sorry. Of, of which character has kissed the most times, Percy yeah. is... No matter which way you slice it, the character who has been kissed the most amount of times. Yeah, it's Percy. And it yeah, all starts has kissed here. Percy. Mm-hmm. He, he has kissed the twins, he has kissed everyone, he's getting kissed all over the place. He's just very kissable. He is. If the twins weren't related, they either of them could have been the bicycle, the in-party bicycle, but they are related. Despite Game of Thrones' best effort, nobody is really done with twincest. Ugh. To this day. And um, that is getting tagged. <sighs> I do? Okay, fine. Nobody's done with Twincest even to this day, so Percy is the bicycle. Yay! Yay! We love that bicycle boy. We do. So they do a sneaky sneak. They do a sneaky sneak, yes, yes, That's why, yes. That's why Scanlan kissed him, it's because sk- Percy was yes. a natural one. That's how we start. They sneak around the city to scout out the Ember Fortress they have now encountered. Um, and they know that there's a secret entrance to this fortress, and Kima is inside there because that's what the uh, general from last episode told them. Aha! Mm-hmm. There's a threat. We're following a threat here. Um, the rails the rails are there. Um, I don't want chicken right now, but they get fried chicken, and when I watched it the first time I wanted chicken, but now I'm all chickened out. Um, <laughs> when did you have chicken? And my curry. Oh, right. Anyway. I mean, I still didn't get nuggets delivered, and I really want them, but uh, it's eventually. I know. Oh. What kind of What kind of McDonald's are you if you don't deliver nuggets on a Saturday? It's a good question. A bad Seriously. McDonald's. I am extremely upset by this. This is an official complaint. In the totally right McDonald's. channel. Yes. 
if McDonald's Germany is listening to this. <laughs> uh, I would send you nuggets, but I think by the time they reach it, it would be quite inedible. Uh, but who knows? By the time time you figure out which delivery platform to use in the German language, whatever. We're not sending each other food. I mentioned our spell, and he wants to use it so badly. And it is, this is technically one of the best plans they have ever come up with. Yes. Yes. It involves Pike and him teleporting, which, like, yeah, that's how how the dimension door works. It is. Put a pit in there for next episode, people. Uh, Percy asked if there's a mute spell or some kind, probably for his gun. Yeah, and just in, uh, just for sp- for stealth missions in general. Mm-hmm. Which is going to lead to very cool moments. 90 episodes from now. Yes. See you in nine years. Take it, take it, stay hydrated. That too. Ugh. Hit the washi tape. Um. <laughs> Rog needs blood. He does been an hour and they haven't killed anything, which also applicable to the podcast. Take a note down for Grog saying that he's a vampire and he needs blood, because that's gonna come up later. <laughs> anyway, where were we? We were talking about Dimension Kissing. Door. Dimension Door. Yes, yes, okay. Like, this is literally, legitimately, as I said this before, a really good plan. Just, Scanlan and Pike jump in on the parapets, Scanlan, um, Thunder waves, people off the parapets, and then they are out again. That's this, 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 yeah, hit and run, yeah. amazing. Pike is yeah, there for fine. decoration, but also, um, just you're a chipmunk. Um, but also, I'm a chipmunk. Um, yes, in case Scalin wouldn't have been able to push them both off the parapets, Pike would have been there to bash their heads in and heal Scalin. So this is a good plan, amazing good coordination, plan. you guys. Bravo, we 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 support you. Um. Yeah, in the this only thing that I have no idea is, is where does he get so many spell slots for Dimension Door? Because Dimension Door is pretty hefty. He is level 9 or something. He probably has like 2 or 3. I think he's got at least a couple. It's just, I, I, I'm, as of someone who plays a board, I, I'm always kind of amazed that like, you're just going to dump, you're just going to do 2 of those in a row? Like, that's a lot of spell slots. My bard never got that far. Anyways. Why are we singing? What happens? do Mm-hmm. What were you trying to sing for? What? What? Who? What are we doing? <laughs> we're recording a podcast. Was this a break? Usually when we start singing or humming tunes, it means we're breaking for content warnings. No, I was doing a, like a, a tap, so I was like, do 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 Like a military funeral. Oh, who are we burying? You're barred. Oh, no, she's alive. She's just in a world that will never be revisited. Um, <laughs> that was a very happy funeral thing. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Losing track is what we're doing. Okay, okay. That's yeah, combat. okay. Combat. Combat, yes. Yes. Um... So Keyleth does a thing where she pulls someone under the lava to make him shut up when he yells out in pain from lava. Yeah. Like, shh, 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 shh. Yes. And, go. and she's like, this is the meanest thing I've ever done. And Vex is like, but you killed a kid. He's like, oh, thanks, Vex. Uh, and this is where Keyleth... is Vex. This is... <laughs> that too. It's a, me- it's a fucking mess. I love this Vex party. wasn't the one who mess. inappropriately brought this up this time. He will be later. Later. Like, this is also just, like, the story behind Keyleth killing that kid is, first of all, wow, Matt. Wow. Wow, Matt. Wow, Matt. Matthew, really. Matthew Matthew. Mercer. (laughs) Matthew Miller. Stage name Matthew Mercer. Does he have a middle name? I don't know. I just know his his, his birth name is Miller. Uh, Anyway... No, what? What? Anyway. Bringing this anyway. up against Keyleth is a dick move by everyone. I understand this is hilarious out of game, but in game, this was an honest mistake with horrible consequences. That's just. I understand why Keyleth is in a perpetual panic attack from here on out. Yeah, that honestly shouldn't have happened, and if it had have happened, oh. would have 
I would have probably at least offered to have the characters do like a resurrection ritual for the poor kid. Pike would have had um Revivify. That one, yes, already. This is this is this is this is this Anyways, it's just mean to bring this up. We it have is. said a negative thing about Vex. Praise us. Believe it or not, we're capable of it. We are. This is part of the reason why we're we have a pin we have onions about uh Vexleth, but you know, Shepard you have Shepard. onions. I'm just like, really, guys. We have upped onions. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just, I don't even, I don't even have feelings about it. It's just like, oh, yeah, you're just shipping Grog- the actors at this point. Yeah, Grogleth, on the other hand, Grogleth is very real. <laughs> I didn't know you were an artist. Yes, he is so into it. He Grog is also the first one to recognize that Kilos is fucking brutal and be into it. Yeah. This is going to be so consistent throughout the entire campaign. It is amazing. This is why it's sort of a running gag right now. <laughs> yeah. But it's amazing that it's this, it's this relevant this early. Yeah, there's two ships like I just like you know, the ships that weren't, but the ships that like <laughs> kind of were throughout and it's like Grogleth and Pykeldon. Yes. Both of those. The little ships that couldn't, but, you know. Should've. Should've. Um, <laughs> so they, they fight a bit to get inside the fortress at that point. Uh, yes, there's some. Point, Pike. Hmm? Oh! Pike dangles off of Grog's backside. Uh, yeah, um, Grog is trying to, open. Grog is trying to open the door. Pike is assisting. So it's like described how she just like blumps around his middle and is just hanging off of him to just help with a strength check. It's very cute. It's so cute. They're it's, such siblings. Yeah. yeah. They've done this so many times. Probably to, like, pull off a, like, open a locked pantry door to get some snacks. <laughs> many applications, many times. It's, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, throughout this, uh, Pike also turns a spiritual weapon into a lasso to drag someone into lava, which, um... Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know... If like you do for a spiritual weapon of a good aligned deity, yes. Mm-hmm. Like alignment is bullshit, but but oh boy, <laughs> the one time I think it's actually applicable is for paladins and paladins and clerics, because they are serving a deity, and those deities do have values. Those deities are not human. They're they're beyond human, and they are leading and applying their own values to you. Yeah, so you have to kind of act within their um, perimeters, mm-hmm. unless I like, guess you're forced. Um, <laughs> what did you say? Think, or, or else they take the magic back. Yeah, um, then they do that because you're not serving them anymore. It's complicated, but this is like one time where the whole alignment thing sort of makes sense. Because also, yes. gods should be judgmental bitches. They are. They're such a, they're such a judgmental And every god we this meet in this is later. a very judgmental bitch. I have, I have, some, I have some issues with, with uh, Sarah Ray for a couple of reasons. And like, I like Sarah Ray, all things considered. You know? She's Out a of all girl. the gods we meet, she's, she's the least bad one. However... Um, the whole like afterlife is a beach full of pearls, which she walks on, and all of all of the souls of the people who worship her are pearls on a beach. That's mm. I what, <laughs> ma'am, <gasps> ma'am, ma'am. Is the is the is tree to be better or the- worse than Grumpy Tree with apples? I'll take the Grumpy Tree with apples. I'll pick apples for eternity. I mean, like, I'd be a book, but um, <laughs> only if I could know, fall on like, Ayun every day. <laughs> but like, is this like a a Sarah Rick step on me thing? Like just being <laughs> like, I don't get what <laughs> you cracked the code. <laughs> you cracked the code. That's it. That is it. That is it. <laughs> Somebody simped too hard, and she was like, "Oh, this is a legitimate de- 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 desire to fulfill no. something for all my servants." <laughs> the Raven Queen should look into that because, boy, does she have some boot lickers out there. Oh. She does. Uh. <laughs> oh, we will get there. Everybody stay hydrated. Uh, everyone stay hydrated. Anyway, so they go. 
inside the thing, inside the umber hole. They've, they've breached the umber hole. Umber hole, not umber hole. Umber holes. We are breaching the umber hole. Umber hole. There's no umber hooks. There might be basilisks later on. They found like a statue that was basilisk sized, petrified. Mm -hmm. Um, So they're on high alert. They're breaching. It's happening. We are so breaching. We are inside. We are inside, finally. (laughs) Now we're going to happen to the podcast. (laughs) End the episode. (laughs) We are just doing this in real time. (laughs) Don't take that sound clip out of context. (laughs) What? Please don't cut that sound clip of you saying we're inside, we're inside. Oh, finally, thank God. I don't, don't clip it without context. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway. Yeah, okay. So this is the point in the, in the episode where, um, after, well, um, yeah, okay, first of all, we get a, re- we get a non-reveal of a map of these Ember Hold with a lot of construction paper on it. Which is apparently yes. Sam's favorite terrain. It's a very that good joke. Surprise me. Yeah, no, it isn't. Um, he has a lot of. He has, he has young children. He has daughters. <laughs> does he have daughters? One daughter. What does that daughter. have to do with construction paper? Crafts. Okay. Not yeah, entirely sure. I thought it was doing crafts five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago. Oh, oh she may have been too young at that point. It's just I associate. Kids was just having like a lot of craft on the ground that you have to kind of step around carefully. Yeah. Oh, that makes so much sense. Oh wow, <laughs> you just made that deeper than it was. Yeah, it's much deeper than it was. But yeah. Still. Also, uh, Zach is just this is. I noticed this in a later episode, but Zach, the Overlord, is wearing first of all the twitch shirt that matches the construction paper a little in the purple, and also he just randomly hangs out with his butt in frame, like pad of his butt, just standing there. Like, is this is, what are you doing? Is this your is this your sign for a break? Is you are you trying to, are you checking cameras? Did you lose something? Are you what's going on? Zach? Making kissy faces faces at, at Matt. What is okay? Just <laughs> yeah, have your butt in what... frame. I mean, dream profession, if so. Because, like, if I could choose anyone, any profession on the... Well, if I could choose any profession on the Critical Role team, I would choose to <laughs> write their books. But if I could choose any other <laughs> profession for the Critical Role team, it would be standing behind the camera making kissy noises at Matt to try to get him to break character. That sounds like a worthwhile goal. Also, as soon as Matt starts describing what the room they've stepped into, like, Liam and Laura are like, does this look like a restroom? Like, break room? Is this where you can, like, like have a recess? <laughs> Which is kind of fun. They're invoking, invoking the break again. And then we go on break. I, it will never not be funny to me that, like, Laura gets to be like, can we go on break, please? And Matt's like, oh, obviously, immediately. <laughs> and, like, that one time, Liam was like, can we go on break? And they're like, No. Just piss on Ashley. Die. Die, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so they go on break. you for a we restroom tre- break, you, you give her a restroom break. <laughs> you do. Um, the break is just watching the character intros again. They don't, like, they don't, they never do anything for the episode. You don't, it's just, they don't do anything. <laughs> yep. Why are they here at this point? I don't just, know. I don't I'd rather understand. watch the new opening for 15 minutes. Just like, re roll it all over. The first again. one opening, not the new one right now. I don't want to watch that for 15 minutes. Um, I don't want to watch that for 5 minutes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Um, we come back to Ryan Akaba thrusting his crotch at the camera. It's not as bad as it sounds, but it is also a thing that happens and that he takes damage for. That is the appropriate response. Yes. We're just talking about the t-shirts because they're, they're so much work, you guys. T-shirts. We're only going to do this for limited runs if you really want it because it's so much work. It's never wor- worth it, she said. <laughs> Unbeknownst to her, they would have a giant dozen merch store. They would have like five giant dozen merch stores in a few uh, years from then. Global uh, merch stores. Yeah, three of which are going to contact me. <laughs> uh. Right. You critters have suffered, okay? I have yes. a graphic out out here where I made I did the math of how buying the first art book was cheaper to order from the US store than it was from the UK store. Because they 
didn't get that dollar and pound prices aren't the same, and so it ended up being more expensive, yeah. even with shipping and stuff, to order from the UK okay. store. This, is, this, is, this has been a mess. And now having one in the Netherlands that I could just technically drive to and pick up on site, I know they don't do that, but I could. Um, it's like, things are going to be better now, I think. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, what else? So they infiltrate the dungeon. They do. They, yeah, this is a dungeon crawl now. Yeah. King Marigold and Queen Dorara. Yes, as we've established at the beginning of the episode, that's the name of the of the uh, king and queen of the dwarves. Durgur. 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 They do offer Urmagurd as a name. Yeah, they, it is a little bit confusing to have a key, like the name of the, the race be Durgur and the king is named Murgul. I mean, you could also argue it's confusing to have a, to have a character called Alora and then have a Queen Olara. Yeah, no, that's confusing, but uh... but I think it is well established at this point that that up until I think Pervon, Matt doesn't really speak the names aloud before he assigns them. And then he learned. And then he learned. Sort of, a little. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Um. So they are in literally the dungeon part of the castle, just prison cells and torture chambers all around. They just go straight to dungeon. Yeah. Um. Vex there's scouts no, ahead. No root Vex scouts ahead and encounters a torturer, I think, and is like, "Yeah, I'm killing this dude." And everyone is like, "Where's Vex? What is he doing?" Huh? Which leads us to the quote that I have on a pencil that, uh, I'm on my, I'm on my desk, so, da, da, da. Pencil case noises, pencil case noises. <laughs> just, that was like the perfect pencil case noise. That was like a, a GPA, that was like a, a, mm-hmm. uh, a special effect. You can just download this in like some sort of, a, in some sound effect library. And this. Yes, exactly. Is I am quoting the pencil reading. I'm killing someone. Hold please in my hand right now. Yay! Yay! I, we support this. I also see the tarot cards of Bex and Percy, who didn't save me from boot camp. But hey, I still have them as a good luck charm. And oh, is this what is this? What is this? Ha ha! This is the pencil that reads. We don't do anything with dignity. Maybe this time it'll give you luck. Maybe this time I'll be lucky. Okay, I'm not singing this. What? Which one of them is shorter? <laughs> Vex is currently shorter than Vex. <laughs> I'm closing. Is this just is this bragging about my merch? No, it's fine. It's it, this is this is of the merch. Remember when they sold the actual rings? Oh God! Remember the first bit of actual Vex merch we got was an eight hundred dollar ring. Yep, I remember this. So I think that on the whole spectrum of merch, bragging about having some tarot cards and some pencils is completely fine. I just told you all about it, the navigation of the US and UK stores we had to do to get the best deals out of this, so this is an accomplishment, okay? I yes, was devoted this is, to this. You brag. You've earned the right. Uh, anyways, let's talk about the episode. Mm-hmm. Here. Yeah, okay. No, because this is all taking place while everybody's still kind of stuck in the staircase. Um, mm-hmm. And Tiberius is just reading. And then he's trying to get Scanlan to read. And one of Scanlan's best features early on is his complete lack of patience for any of Tiberius's bullshit. Just in general. Yeah. Like, the thing about Scanlan good job. is that he's very fun when he's next to somebody. He's like one of those guys that's like kind of a dick, but like he's also a dick to other dicks. <laughs> So he can, like, like sniff them around. out. Hmm? He can sniff them out. Yes, he can sniff them out. And he's not as bad as Tiberius. So it's like, once he's around Tiberius, he just becomes effort like effortlessly more tolerable. I think this is... I think their slight animosity is just goes back to the fact that um, Scanlan is like barely more than a joke character at this point, and Tiberius like is just like Orion took Tiberius so fucking seriously. Yeah. So he's a joke killer. In general, yes. So I'm pretty sure that just, that's where, and he would, and then we had this even during like early moments when they were still at role playing of like Tiberius being a very no fun allowed kind of person. Unless it's his fun and he's showboating. We shouldn't be talking about him. Um. 
But their animosity is very entertaining. Yes. Also, from this exchange, when Tiberius tries to recommend his book to Skeletal, Skeletal is like, I'm a non-fiction reader, and um... <laughs> I don't know what to do with that information. Is this a good or a bad thing for a bard? I mean, in, in, in Matt's approximation, it's probably good. That's just because Matt looks at Skeletal and sees everything he wants to see. It wouldn't really matter either way. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. Like, 90% of the tales, 99% of the tales Scanlan tells are fiction. You are. He's a compulsive liar. It's going to be ridiculous later on. Yep, he's not. He Also, his memory isn't the best. So considering he keeps forgetting which which of the twins is uh, <laughs> the stealth twin. Oh, God. And which is the tracking twin. Yeah. And, and then we get to the yikes statement about dwarves. Oh, there we are. Okay, yes, yes. Um, This is said by Laura when they find some people in the cells and she advocates for letting them out, which, good. But also yeah. this whole they're regular dwarves, they're good people just encompasses the entire problem of having always evil races who are yes. for some reason all dark-skinned. What the hell? <laughs> what the fucking hell? Subtle. Whoever is this Mr. Can we blame Mr. J- Gygax for this? I don't. Maybe I don't know. Some of them blaming wizards of the coast. ever. To whom it may concern. That's a yikes for me. It's a yikes for me. But they get to the torture chamber, which is also a yikes for me. But also yikes for me. I will also. We talked about this. <laughs> so in the in the dungeon, there are at least two living people. Yeah. Uh, do they maybe come three. back to those living people? I mean, they try to let them out, they try to heal them, they give them water, and they give them cheese. Mm-hmm. And then they just like, yeah, there's like a door behind lava, just go, go out there. Hey, you're you're like starving. And are nearly dead. Cheese! You, you can, cheese! Have there some you go. cheese. Have some cheese. Um, the door's that way. Good luck. <laughs> don't let it hit you on the way out, but also don't let the lava hit you. Or the war yeah. camp. Or this is, by the way, if, if I were to ever play like a, a, a what is it called, uh, an Exangia campaign, this would be my character. One of the dwarves who was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would be like, I I scraped my way out. I survived barely, barely. I got to the surface. Uh huh. And now, like, my experience, and like when I'm out of the surface, like years later, I hear about this vox machina motherfuckers. <laughs> And I'm who like, the guys the who gave bare me... minimum. Who did the bare minimum? <laughs> the barest of minimums. And I'm like, like years after the fact, like finally after years of travel, like out of the, out of the, the underdark, like what? Does what, Tiberius like, have the world? The, does Tiberius have the teleportation circle spell at this point? I don't. Probably not. Right. Probably not. That it's would just, make it so I, much worse. <laughs> so much worse. Uh... <laughs> Anyway. Yes, my anonymous crow? So they enter the torture chamber. Yes. Yes, and yes, yes. Well, they do. There's a weird, like... There's a co-temporality with discovering a torture chamber and also hiding in, in like, cells. Yeah, because Vax scouts ahead, as usual. Yeah, he has the torture chamber. Everyone else just has... He is, like, steps approaching and has to hide in some cells with some... The end bodies. Which, like, Matthew. I kind of want to take <sighs> Matthew. Matthew. Keyleth grabs what she thinks to be a dead body to hide under, and of course, Keyleth of course. just happens to pick the one who is not quite dead. But he is very dead when she turns into Minxy and takes his head in her mouth. Yes. Which, like, I would ask why? Why is it the Percy? Matthew. Matthew. Were you mean to your girlfriend again on stream, Matthew? Matthew? Do we need to keep a tally up for often you're unnecessarily like... cruel to your girlfriend on stream, Matthew? Matthew? I also do kind of take issue with, with Vax a little bit here, because I do think that, like, scaling a head is fine. I think that there's some, like, element of, like, you gotta, like, you, I, you gotta let the party in. You know, you gotta have to, you just, you can't be the only one playing D&D. Yeah, it's kind of like the rogue thing, I think, that happens. Usually, I mean, usually he doesn't scout alone. 
That's true. But my main thing is like seducing everyone is also the part thing. But like we can we can critique <laughs> that because it's not cool and it doesn't make everybody comfortable. My bard has uh, ever seduced anyone, at least not on purpose. Good. But my main thing is, it's like, it's the same thing I think with rogues. Like, we can talk about how, like, rogues scouting ahead and, and, and you know, not including the party. Like, that gets grating sometimes. Like, it, it does feel like, well, like, are you playing a different game than us? Because, like, we're, we're, we're all playing together here. And, you know, you're off playing, like, a hitman. Just let it all out, sweetheart. Remember, your DMs may be listening. No, my game is actually really good with this. My DM had like a, uh, I, I played a different campaign with the same DM, but like she had a, an NPC who was a rogue. Mm-hmm. It was like the, the party rogue, basically, because I don't know, we just, she was great to have around. And like she was always very, very good at like looping the party back in because if the, because I, sp- I can ask her smell, if the DM had a rogue NPC and was just taking out all the enemies and not letting us play, that would be really bad. <laughs> Indeed. But that's not what happened. And I just, I'm just saying, it's not that different like when a player does it. True. Especially when they get to the point where they, where, like, right now when Vex with, like, a good roll and good sneak attack can just take out basically every non-boss encounter. Yeah, I'm just, you know, like, I, I think that it's good etiquette and good advice for people who are playing Dungeons and Dragons. To look back on your action, at your actions, and realize how many problems have I solved by myself <laughs> in this particular session, and can I take a little bit of a backseat and let somebody else do it? Like you can't be the person who does all the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, mm-hmm. so um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off or anything. Were you done? No, no, no. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, so here we are with uh, Keila having a now a dead body in her mouth, and uh, Tiberius thinks he sees something, doesn't, and thus only encourages violence. Vex is going off on a torturer. Um, All the party but I thought this faction was kind of funny. All the party busts in to find like the half dead torturer mm-hmm. and like unleashes their attacks at once, or like anyone that can reach, basically. And, like, mm-hmm. Matt doesn't even have them roll for damage. He's just, like, he had, like, two hit points left. Like, you guys, guys. Go to town. You're just, like, it's just a little guy. He's just a little guy. He's just a little torture guy. <laughs> yeah, and he then gets, um, appropriately eviscerated by Grog in a very explicit manner that is, like, oh, boy. Yeah, this is why we're warning for this. This is, this is a lot, it's, like... It's rough. Even taking into account that we are in a torture chamber, it's a lot. It's a lot. I definitely, like... Ugh. It's, it's, it's just a lot. Anyway, so who else is in that torture chamber, darling sweetheart, that got my life is deep business partner? It's Kima of fucking Vord. Woo! Da, 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 da. There she is. Aren't you happy to Yay. see her? I'm happy to see her. She's not so happy to see us, though, because she's uh, naked on her back. I mean, she's, yeah, she is, keep that in mind, too. She is naked and tied to a torture rack. Mm hmm. Like, Can't have to know how much she's naked and tied to a torture rack and is actively, like, is fresh out of a torture session. <laughs> she is very angry. <laughs> And demands to be untied from the literal torture rack she is on. Yes. Which immediately makes everyone around her suspicious. Is this really Kima? Can we trust her? Oh my god. How dare she be not a docile victim right now? Yep. And that just, this is, this is, it's kind of disturbing how immediate this reaction is. It's very disturbing. It's just like an immediate turnaround of like, is this actually chemo? Because she goes like, can you guys who get me off the rack? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it made me do that. Torture victim right there. Yeah. Like also, did he expect you to be polite about this? Is she supposed to put in a form of written request? Also, can I? Also she can't write. Her hands are tied. Also, even if this wasn't chemo. 
Like, even if, even it, was if it wasn't someone else. If even so- if it wasn't. <laughs> if somebody, if like, you found a halfling naked tied to a rack, freshly tortured, and they go, please untie me right away. Even if it's not the person you were looking for, you should probably untie them. I think this is a trap. Because if, like, if I was a minion and my job in this plan was to get fake tortured on a real torture device, would... this, this would be my heel face turd. <laughs> this is when yeah. you quit your job yeah, in I union. Would, I would contact my union. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh god, we made the same joke. Of course we do. <sighs> the brain cell. Uh, the brain cell. The brain cell. Yeah, so uh, under which circumstances would you distrust a halfling woman tied to a torture rack who wants to be please taken off this torture rack? I Anyways, they inside uh, check Kima. They inside check Kima. <laughs> and Matt is a little put out, like she's furious and also tortured. She's not in her right mind. She wants to be untied. <laughs> Fuck you, Vex. Like, okay, shout out to Scanlan who sees this happening and is like, healing word, yeah, you do inside checks. Why do you call me for an inside check, by the way? This is happening again. Vex asks Scanlan for an inside check on Kima, who's not in her right mind. Like, buddy, he's, he's not. Buddy. He, he doesn't. You can just inside check yourself. You know? Do it yourself. Like, you can just check. Gotta you work just out better. Let's just, ugh. Yeah, um. <laughs> so Percy, first really? of all, makes the rack be less torturous and then uses a utility shot to shoot off her so, like, chains. I'll be honest, I, I think that Percy on some level, like, I did watching that scene, like, did you want to free him or did you just want to shoot some chains, buddy? Is this like therapy for you right now? It is therapy, I right? Do, are you dealing with some stuff? Can somebody check in with Percy after this, maybe? <laughs> so he shoots her chains off. Or he shoots one of her chains off. Yeah, she breaks the one, think... other ones herself. Yes. No, also Grok does like an axe thing and weakens or does something. It's like, it could have gone bad. This could have gone She could have, you know, could have returned her to Allura with a little bit more damage than that you found her. <laughs> Yeah, this is Kima. She's just missing a few choice limbs. Um, we have those in the bag, Don't... literally. <sighs> now I'm gonna have to. Never mind. We already. We already have body horror, gratuitous violence, sweetheart. This is. The... <laughs> anyway, Grog thinks it's hot. We all think it's hot. Let's be real. We all think it's hot. Uh, everyone can. Everyone starts offering her things. I mean, she's literally still naked. Yes. So Grog offers her armor, Tiberius offers her robes, she picks the armor because of course she does. And then she asks Actually, Pike for her that's not very practical. Yeah. I mean, she should, ideally you would put on the robes under the armor, but whatever. Then she asks Pike for her mace, and it's very tense because Pike is very distrustful for some reason. I don't, I don't fully understand why. They found Percy in literally the same circumstances. Yeah, they sure did. And Percy's much sh- much shadier. At least much, half much of the party did, and I think it's the half that Pike was in. Sure. sure. If you want to know why I'm talking like this right now, pay us a dollar a month and access our special Vex and Supplementary Materials episodes on Patreon. Yeah, we're really proud of that one. It's a good episode. It is a very um, good episode. Legitimately. Uh, so, she... Turns out, all she wants to do with her mace is get a little bit of some anger out, because she's dealing with some stuff. She, yeah, she kind of just wants to bash her to that torturous head in some more. She even cleans the mace afterwards. She's very polite. She is very you know, polite. Polite about people when, who were like, ooh, you're a little bit pushy about wanting to get off this torture weapon. Oh, I don't know if you can do that. She cleans them. She does. And then she wants her um, stuff, which is in a vault, and I added the there's a vault eye emoji thing in because that's Vex's reaction. Um, yes. She also does a casual dragonborn racism thing. Which, yeah, <laughs> you can notice that, like, it does feel very much like a random NPC line. 
Yeah, but also it kind of makes sense. Like, she remarks the point that Tiberius is, like, very nice despite his scale color, which yeah, but it, it also, feels it definitely random, sounds but like... also she is literally serving Big Daddy Metallic Dragon. And, yes. And the whole metallic chromatic split and always evil chromatic stuff is very much a thing in this campaign and in D&D. And, <laughs> and it's bad, but it is a thing. I mean, we um, literally only ever meet chromatic dragonborn, and like, okay, two out of three are kind of played by douchebags. Um, so whatever and one on that front. Betrays the party. So <laughs> right, he's the weird, like, not the douchebag. He's the though. least problematic one. <laughs> Amazing. So, okay, so even about this, Kima was apparently right. Yeah, <laughs> Kima is just everything. Pretty much everything she says in this. The entire passage is just right. Uh, yeah, this is yeah. Mm-hmm. Minxie goes to bury her shame. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, Kima acquires a great sword from Grog, and then we get to the main conflict for the foreseeable future. Grog is a polite boy who was raised right. Yes, um, Grog is the only one treating her right here. Yeah, this is the the sort of the Dragon Age mage versus uh, Templars. <sighs> is that the thing? Maybe. Not true. Re- yeah, it is a thing, but there's there's never actually an inner party conflict. No, it's not an inner party conflict. This is the, it's it's the way that this conflict happens in my brain is it's like I can very much see the sort of the dialogue trees coming up of like, do you wanna do you wanna state this dialogue that favors Kima? Or do you wanna state this dialogue that favors Kuroda? Like it's very much split down the middle that way. It's like if you had to mediate any of the Anders and Fenris banters. Yes, so, yes, that's closer. Though, hmm. Like, in the Kima versus Clorota thing, there's someone Someone is objectively in the right, which with Fenris and Anders is more difficult. And I say that more as difficult. someone who is very anti-Templar, very pro-mage. Whoa! Tear down the fucking... Tear down all of the towers, blow up the chantries. Whoa! Bitches. Um, <coughs> yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, it's basically yes. busy and talking about so Kimo, mage towers. Kimo, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Kimo very much does not want to go. Again, I cannot stress this enough. She recently tortured, probably watched her friends get murdered and their brains sucked out. Yeah. But, um, had many people watched many people getting their brains slurped out by Cloroda's people. Doesn't want to go with the party that has Cloroda in it. It's basically very suspicious of this of this mind flayer who's around. Yeah, and proceeds to tell the party that he's going to betray them. He has motivations he of his own. really said that. Like, she, they try to argue with, oh, but all those evil mind flayers she might wish were controlled by Kavar, and Kima is like, yeah, for now, but they also weren't actually the good guys when they weren't controlled by Kavar. Are you guys okay? And, like, at some point, he, they say, they tell her that, like, you know, they want to, he wants to liberate his people, and she says, like, yeah, and then okay, what? Okay, what'll happen? <laughs> and then what? And will he protect you then? And like Tiberius says, yes. He said so. I have a wisdom of four. I know what I'm doing. Yep. Yeah, he said so. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. It's just, this is how, this is how hive minds uh, I work. I want those receipts. <sighs> I want it on paper. And like, sure, we are approaching this with hindsight, but also... <laughs> Also, like, the foreshadowing wasn't subtle. The way Clarota described the entire system, like, his claim that maybe safe passage could be arranged is extremely dubious, even without hindsight. Yes. Especially if you are at all familiar with D&D lore. And, which we will have somebody on who is very familiar with D&D lore. Oh, yeah. talk about this. Woo! Later. I mean, earlier, I mean, we already had, I mean, it's a time paradox. (laughs) Yeah. Um, then this just escalates in that when Kima is like, are you sure about this? Tiberius is uh, deadly offended and just goes all flame breath yelling. Which every time Tiberius goes to the yelling place is a bad time. It's always a bad time when Tiberius starts yelling and we're going to go into detail about why next episode. Uh. Yeah, but like at this point they're fully just threatening the torture victim. 
Yeah, he's just person... intimidating her by leaning into his dragony aspects, which she just commented on, like, yeah, this is how you like this is how you talk to someone who who is already in on um mis- um distrustful of traumatic dragons. Like good job. Uh Yep. Who and threatens Kima like... is Scanlan, who is like, Well, if we have to choose between you and our friend Clarota and just Scanlan Anyone, can you please read the quest log? Explain to me like I'm five why you are even here. Yeah, mm-hmm. explain to mm-hmm. me why you are underground and what you what came here to What are you do. doing here? And again, ex- I want you to imagine the conversation, please. I want you to, yes. before you make any strong things, imagine the conversation. To Let's Allura. roleplay this. You go to Alora. She asks where her friend is, and you're like, "Oh, but she was a little bit pissed off after we cut her off a torture rack." With like, we were very slow to do that, and she didn't want to work with a brain sloping sloping monster, so we just kind of left her for dead. Do you know if she's That's alive? Hmm. <laughs> no. I don't know. Why are you if... asking? Was this like the point of why we went down there? I don't know. It's just I kind of forgot. This hey, is... look at her. <laughs> Where's Scanlan? Oh, he got eaten by mind flares. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. So this is stupid. This is just stupid. Literally um, every time they um, they uh, even hinted wanting to side with Clorota over Kima is just all around stupid. Like. Do that, and you will never be able to show your faces anymore, or Taldore again. Yep. Yep. There goes that friendship. And the only people who have, who are actually considering that apparently, or who are actually like reading the quest tag log, or I don't know, are Vex and Grog, and Grog only because he's really into what a Kima. combination. The willing bland side <laughs> just has the quest log, and they're reading it, and they're going, uh oh. Guys, guys, here, it says here that every episode in the beginning we mentioned we're here to find Kima. Um, maybe we shouldn't leave her, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, hmm. God. Yeah, and Kima, Kima, who is just, has like the patience of a fucking saint yep. throughout this episode. She's just like, okay. Okay. All Would of you, you are. about how desperate she is? Because Kima does oh, not, yeah. Kima is not a patient person. No! No, she is not. Which means she's very desperate to get out of here. <sighs> but she's willing to just take a deep breath and be the bigger person. All of these people are either idiots or brain controlled or both. But it's just, it's what, what, the only thing that they're to work with is like, there's no other option right now. It's just, oh god, all of these people are fucking lost. Okay, but no other way out, so she just calms herself down. Or something. It just arranges herself with the situation, which is just so bad. Ah, <laughs> oh, these people Incredible. are just a fucking mess. Incredible. I <laughs> like. I don't want an adaptation of this arc for many reasons, but like, no, if but... there was an adaptation, it should just be like a twenty-minute video from Kima's point of view, just like. And then we okay. see. <laughs> then these assholes. And then they, they can you fucking believe this, Allura? Like it'll just be like a, a why did you send video. these people? Was this really your best option? <laughs> uh. Yeah. Okay. So they kind of calm down. Well, Kima calms them down, really. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone kind of chills, and then they end the episode with like two notable, three notable um things afterwards. One of them is that Pike goes grab some torture weapons. For Grog. Kima wants to find her equipment. Yeah, that's that too. She mentions a vault and Vex is down to find the vault. Mm-hmm. And then they have like a vote at the table like, hey, who would have picked Kima and the top table? So uh, like Liam hesitantly, Vex, Pike, Laura, Ashley, and Travis slash Grog. This is confusing. Top table is yes. like Kima. Bottom table is like Laroda, which... Uh, <sighs> yeah, poor Judd. Like it's surprising and not surprising at the same time. Percy surprises me. Percy surprises me also, but I, I honestly do wonder a little bit about like, was that wasn't like fully on this episode? Because I feel like he was mm. a little bit spacey. He says something about only one of them wants me to become a liar, and like, no, neither of them do. Oh, neither of them do, buddy. 
Neither of them were like, Kima maybe wants you to also, break your word, but... Uh. Percy's not a great judge of character. <laughs> true, true. He is not that. Mister made a deal in his sleep. Which is, Didn't... which is like, unethical deal-making that wouldn't really stand up in so small court. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, all the fanfiction I should write about that. Yes, and then they discuss the logistics of Grog and Kima. Oh, right. Also, um, which I don't think we can judge them for right now after what we did this episode. That's true. Though I'm assuming that the Eiffel Tower scenario didn't involve a lesbian. That's true. We can hope so. Yeah, we can hope so. It's just a safe assumption to make, but yeah, okay, um... Less said about this, the better. Why do we keep talking about stuff like that? Oh. We, someone has to. Remember when I was conflicted about whether or not to tick the explicit content box? <laughs> <laughs> I had such oh, high I hopes for us. Finished, and that's pretty much where we finished the episode. Yeah, there's another dance party after this, by the way. Oh, yay! Which I still recommend to check out. They are very... There's a lot of joy. They spark all the joy. Yeah, especially since this episode kind of ends on a bit of a... Like, it was, it's a pretty fun episode that ends on, like, a... Ugh, no. Ugh. Indeed. Oh, also, if you are paying us and have access to our notes, um, you will now see a bonus thingy why episode 6 was delayed, which is for the first time we tried to record this on a Sunday when the internet was very bad. Yep. Like, so bad the Discord call didn't work, we tried to call over WhatsApp, we tried to call over Skype. Yeah, I think, yeah, we, we tried every single thing. Everything. Just, yeah. For two hours, we attempted everything. And then we, uh, then the Skype call got very funny, and we managed to write down a visualization of that. <laughs> because we are very funny. We're very funny. Anyway. We are so cute. Okay. Yes. Anything else to say about the episode? Not particularly. Shall we uh, engage in our perfect beyond yes. question yes. peer review? Mm -hmm. Also that scale. The Pervon scale. Pervon scale, which a joke that will make sense in um thirty eight episodes. Thirty eight episodes. Yes. I'm so very good have at to say about nothing it. in my head. Um. So the P is for pizzazz, which um, I think we just have to go all out all, all by default for the opening and the dance party. Yeah. This yeah, is a five. This the is shirts. Shirts. Easy five. The shirts. Easy five. Easiest shirts. five ever. It's a five. It's a fun one. All right. That's it. We're just going to say five. Also, the, also, also, the, also the, um, the, gra the construction paper and the cute hand-drawn maps. Just This is such a five. It's a charmer. Yeah. Alright, that's a five. Mm -hmm. The U in Pervon stands for uncomfortableness, and I think this one unfortunately also needs to get some... Yeah, it's like not the worst, but it has some... It has some... Moments. Moments. It's like the always evil race moments, two of those, and some please pack take your clothes off moments. Uh, yeah. And just the whole thing with the interrogating a torture victim... It's and also like leaving a, t a prisoner behind. It's I, I'm gonna I'm tempted to give it a minus two. That that sounds fair. Yes. Okay, minus two. Okay. The R we are at point at three, and the R is for role playing and realness. I mean, they. Tr hmm. I know. I agree. I, don't, I think they tried. Yeah, they tried. We're starting. Some. Yeah, we're getting like, to the point where they're spending more time in character than out of character. Mm, true. And while the Kima scene was uncomfortable, they were very in character for it. Like, this yeah, is like the beginning of all of that, I think. Yeah, in a non, like, in a complete just role-playing good or bad, I think they just, they do a lot of role-playing here. and, and I, It's I, not I good, it's, it's not rewarding. bad, it's just real. <laughs> so what do you want to give it? One and a half, two? One and a half? I'm good with one and a half. That's 4.5, all right. V, wait, per P U R, V. Yes, the V. V. In, in Pervon stands for vexiness. Hmm. A, a little bit of vex in this episode. A little bit of vex. She was like the voice of reason throughout all of this. 
She was the voice of reason, but she didn't show up that much. She kind of kept... Yeah. She didn't do the tracking. There wasn't any Persalia in this. Persalia. Why did I say it like that? Persalia. There wasn't very much here. I, I think that, like... I do want to give it a positive score because there were some... There were definitely... There wasn't any Vex mistreating. Let's give it a 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. Five. Which means we're back at 5? Yes. Yes, okay. The A is for action. Which is where we have to reward the uh, Skellen, um plan with the dimension door and, th- and the thunder wave and the dimension door out. Yeah, though I do kind of want to subtract a bit also because of the uh, Vax. Like, but kind of doing some, you know, some faux pas. Really? It wasn't In my that, opinion? I don't think it was that bad this episode. It gets okay, worse. Okay. It gets worse. Okay, <laughs> it gets worse. You're right. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. And like, you can be like very turned off by the violence and stuff, and I understand that, but also like the glee with which Grog approaches these um, fight scenes, especially the one with the torture, is just is actually very infectious and very fun to watch if you are not completely yes. squicked out by the descriptions of violence. So, like, I would give it, like, a solid 2.5. Okay, okay. I uh, Alright, I'll take a 2.5. You want to lower it? I was thinking 2, but 2.5 is okay. Let's give it a 2. I'm probably just um, overindulgent after the uh, Nothing Burger of Combat that was last episode. And the Nothing Burger of Combat that's going to be next episode. Uh, I mean, the combat is like both the worst and least worst part of next episode. So hey, um, hey, is it anywhere at seven? I think so. Oh God! I think we're we're up to the last ep- the last one, the last letter in Pervon, which is N for nine cents. Hmm. 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 Not applicable. Yeah, let's go with not applicable. Yeah, because I can't think of any good nonsense, and I also can't think of any bad nonsense. Yeah, nothing distracting, nothing, um, nothing revealing in a fun way, just nothing. Yeah, okay, not not okay. Really cool. Which means we end with a seven. It's pretty good. Jesus Christ, I'm ninety percent certain we have never given such such a good rating, both on the episode that actually exist. Or on the ones that have lost to the time paradox. Just never. I don't know. Maybe maybe we're just in a loopy mood. Or, but I do remember you saying like when we started that you actually did enjoy this episode. And I think that was reflecting that. Apparently so. Which just goes on to prove how good and well thought out this thing is. Yeah. It's a good scale. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> so seven. We're settling on seven. Yep, we are. I mean, technically it should be going up to 25 or something, but 7 is good. 7 is good. Anything that's not negative 25. Which I don't think we will ever reach, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. We can, we can prove ourselves wrong. I Episode know, 27 I, is coming up. <laughs> Episode 88 is eventually coming up, and I don't like that episode one bit. You like it better or worse than 27? Mm, better. We could have a eighty eight just on in the background and do something else and not be bothered by it. Twenty seven is just viscerally bad. It's upsetting. Uh okay, yeah. Be prepared for how we do that one. We're not. <laughs> What's a quagga? A quagga is the animal that I sent you. No no, that's a quokra. You sent me a quokra with an O. I'm having a Q U A G G A. Oh, I think that's a uh an Looks extinct like zebra. zebra species. Yeah. Okay. That's what you are right now, anonymously. No, oh, I'm an extinct zebra species. Fascinating. Anyway. Yeah, so uh, that brings us thank to a you. close for this episode. Yeah. Thank Just... you very much to Lulafia for our art. Thank you very much to Kurt and Sun for our music. Uh, thank you to our patrons. All two of them at time of recording. And thank uh, you, dear listener, for still being here with us in a whole new year. All right. All right. What What is our opinion this episode? If a torture victim wants a weapon, you say how many? <laughs> okay, I like that one. If a torture victim says, uh, uh, ask. If a torture you victim, say it, you say it. 
If a torture victim asks you for a weapon, you say how many. There we go. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year. Or something. <laughs> Happy New Year this February, when this episode is scheduled to come out. Happy New Year this February. Bye. 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 Bye.